You ever work behind a bar? You know how to make a red eye, young Mr. Flanagan. How about a vodka martini with a perno float? You ever thrown a 400 pound psychopath out of a bar? How about a 100 pound ballerina that's been speeding for three days? Well, these are just some of the tasks you'll be asked to perform, young Flanagan. This is the Upper East Side, the saloon capital of the world, the big time. Are you ready for the big time, young Mr. Flanagan? Felt more like an episode of Beyond Belief with Jonathan Frakes there for a minute, Jesus. All right, today we will be talking about a film that we've all seen it, we all love it. 1990's Cocktail starring Tom Cruise and Brian Brown as two young, ambitious New York City bartenders trying to make it big in the industry of babysitting drunk adults, all the whilst uh, popularizing flair bartending forevermore in the process. Tom Cruise plays the young and wild-eyed Brian Flanagan, fervently aiming towards his goal of opening his own multi-million massive chain of cocktail bars uh, called Cocktails and Dreams that will have one in every mall in America, or something along those lines. Whilst his cynical friend uh, Doug Coglin, played by Brian Brown, uh, teaches him everything he knows about working in a bar, sure, but uh, also kind of works against him in, uh, in a lot of the cases. Whilst he's his best friend and they are, do get super close, uh, Doug Coglin definitely is absolutely the antagonist of the film. Please try to keep your envy in check. Ooh, envy? <laughs> he's my protege. Whilst Doug Coughlin does have some endearing qualities, and you do sort of end up liking him uh, throughout the film, he is a piece of shit through most of it. Also, just as an aside, whilst both characters do end up married uh, to beautiful, wealthy women uh, during one point in the film or another, I think it must be said that the character of Doug Coughlin, certainly through my interpretation of the film, it was deeply in love with uh, Tom Cruise's Brian Flanagan. Now, obviously, it's not stated explicitly in the film, uh, it's a product of the 80s after all, but uh, there's a certain amount of love and endearingness that comes uh, from Doug Coughlin towards uh, Brian Flanagan that he doesn't show anyone else in the film. And I think viewing the character through that lens kind of makes his overall fate all the more tragic in my opinion. My best friend in the world, my only friend. So when we first see our bartenders taking the world by storm, uh, it's actually in a TGI Fridays, which as an aside is hilarious to me, uh, this idea of TGI Fridays as this big, super high volume, absolute spectacle uh, of a cocktail bar. Um, kind of like imagining, at least in my opinion, McDonald's serving and making your food like one of those fancy uh, hibachi restaurants. Now from here, a lot of drinks do actually get mentioned in the film, but fewer actually show up on screen. Most of the drinks we see mentioned in the film are usually just a spirit and mixer, a la a screwdriver, or a single shot. But if you want to get loaded, why don't you just order a shot? So what I'm going to be doing in this video is taking four drinks that were mixed and appear on screen uh, from the film and recreating them here on the show. Now, the first cocktail that appears in the film, you all knew it was coming, uh, a red eye the proprietary mix of one Doug Coughlin, and uh, I've seen a lot of recipes online call for a shot of vodka in the red eye, but at least twice in the film you actually get a really good look at Doug Coughlin making the drink, and a pretty good idea of not only the exact ingredients in the drink, but more or less how much of each ingredient as well. Now it's possible that in the book that the film is based on, uh, the red eye does have vodka in it, but I haven't read the book, I'm solely concentrating on the film today, so First drink of the day, it's been a long day, let's make a red eye. So first thing you're going to need is a pint glass. Now in the film it must be said that they use Miller High Life, uh, a product which is not only discontinued, but I wasn't actually able to get any Miller brand of beer here in the UK anyway. And I did Google, you know, what's a good approximation for this beer and, and pretty much the best result I could come up with was any cheaply produced lager is fine, they're more or less all interchangeable. So in that first scene that I'm going to be calling the meat cute between Brian Flanagan and Doug Coughlin, uh, we see Doug Coughlin making a red eye. So what he does first is he opens his bottle of beer and he inverts it inside of a pint glass. And he pretty much just lets the pint glass fill up kind of like this. I think roughly to sort of about there. By the way, the red eye is a very loosely constructed drink. The exact measurements in here was would sort of be missing the point of the drink overall. Delicious. 
Next thing we're going to need is our tomato juice. The good stuff. And we're just going to roughly top that up to... Oh, a little shy of a pint. Round about there. We are going to need some salt, some black pepper. And he actually makes aspirin an ingredient, so we are going to take three aspirin, as he does in the film, and chuck them in there. Then we are going to want to add some hot sauce. Uh, Tabasco brand, specifically, needs to go in there. Uh, it's called for in the scene, we can see it pretty clearly. Then, for the actual eye part of the red eye, a whole leg. Now, whilst I'd normally just take a sip, tell you how it tastes, and then move on to the next drink, I know that nobody's clicking on a red eye video to watch someone take a sip. They want to watch them drink the whole drink, so. Salut. Actually, it's not as bad as you think. It kind of reminds me of a Bloody Mary for obvious reasons. Uh, but the beer goes really well in there. Um, salt and pepper are definitely present. The hot sauce is kind of burning my mouth a little bit because it is just floating on the top. Uh, the aspirin. I can taste it, it's not pleasant. Oh god. Here it goes. That's great. I, just, I fucking hope I'm recording. And on my notes actually say to make a uh, Cuba Libre, and that would be a hypothetical fifth cocktail here because we do uh, see the cocktail mentioned and even made. But it is literally just rum and coke with a squeeze of lime. You bitch! Why didn't you just tell me it was a rum and coke? Uh, drinks are quite an interesting history. We're not going to touch on it too much here, just so we're not wasting too much time. So skipping over that and going on to the next one, uh, a Long Island iced tea. Now, the Long Island iced tea does actually get overlooked in a couple lists I've seen online of all the drinks in the film Cocktail. Uh, they don't actually say the drink by name, but you do see them make it. In that scene in TGI Fridays when they're doing their synchronized flare routine, I slowed down that scene, washed it over a couple times, and I'm fairly certain that they're making a Long Island iced tea. Known as a drink that uh, uses pretty much every clear liquor on a bartender's speed rail, um, we actually kind of see them do that. Uh, I definitely see a bottle of Bacardi Silver, I see a bottle of Absolute Vodka, and I think I see a bottle of what's Gilbert's Gin. Uh, actually, that's Gilby's Gin. There is one brown bottle in there that I couldn't really identify, um, and we definitely don't see them put any triple sec into the drink. Uh, however, they do mix everything, put some sour mix in there, top it up with Coca-Cola. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a Long Island iced tea. So I'm going to make a Long Island iced tea the way I would make one uh, for myself or when I'm working behind the bar. Cocktail shaker. Firstly, we are going to need 10 milliliters of vodka. 10 milliliters of tequila. Now I'm using a pretty rubbish Jose Cuervo. Um, I do have nicer, more expensive tequilas, but the whole point of a Long Island is that all of the booze sort of disappears into the drink. So don't, don't waste your money on the expensive stuff. 10 milliliters of pretty light, pretty unoffensive rum. 10 milliliters of a London dry gin. And for our last alcoholic component, we will need 10 milliliters of Cointreau. We are going to need 10 milliliters of simple syrup. And then lastly, to our shaker, we are going to add 20 milliliters of lemon juice. And then before I shake and do anything with that, I'm just going to put that to the side and I'm going to get the glass we're going to be serving the cocktail in. And I'm actually going to fill that with ice. And then take my simple syrup again and add just a dash to the bottom of the glass like so. Take my Coca-Cola, pour that into the glass about two thirds of the way. Now, why do you want to sweeten already quite sweet Coca-Cola? Now, it's not just about the sweetness, it's about the density of the Coca-Cola. By adding the sugar, we will be increasing the density and just making sure that our Coca-Cola uh, is heavier than the cocktail we're gonna pour on top of it because we're going for a nice layered effect here. I'm going to add the ice to my shaker and uh, give it a good old shake. Alrighty, we're going to take our fine strainer, rest that just on top of our ice, and pour in our cocktail. 
So now we have our lovely layered drink. What do I garnish that with? Let's go, a lemon wheel, my little umbrella. Lovely garnish, stick a straw in it. And there we go, a Long Island iced tea, as I would serve one uh, when I'm at a bar or when I'm at home. Now, usually when I'm serving these to customers, I give them the straw, I tell them to mix it in a bit before they drink it, because obviously, all right, let's give it a try. Lemon, Coca-Cola, sweet, alcohol disappears. Hmm, actually something does kind of come through there. Maybe a little bit of the tequila on the back end, you just get that little sort of earthy whisk. A ghost, it's a ghost of tequila. All right, cool. That's a Long Island iced tea. Moving on. When Brian and Doug have finally moved a step up in the world, working at the cell block, seemingly the only two bartenders to serve like 500 people, Brian is being mercilessly chatted up by his short-lived girlfriend, played by Gina Gershon. She asks for a shot called an orgasm, to which Brian Flanagan replies, how many? And she says, multiple. Oh, the 80s. I'm glad we'll always have you. But instead, he makes her a cocktail called a turquoise blue, and him and Doug Coughlin enter this very long and convoluted flare routine whilst 500 people wait for their drink whilst they spend all this time serving coral. But the turquoise blue is a real drink. Uh, however, at least it is now. I can't quite tell if it was invented before the film or if someone came up with a recipe after the film was released based on that scene. We'll start with a shaker. I'm going for the lovely Havana Club three year. One and a half ounces. We we'll use half an ounce again of Cointreau. Half an ounce of blue curacao. A half an ounce of lime juice. One ounce of pineapple juice. And a quarter of an ounce of our simple syrup. We're gonna add ice to this and shake. We're gonna put one big cube in there for agitation. Then we're gonna do three slightly smaller cubes for dilution and chilling. I will say for all the flair that he's so good at in the film, the shake he does is one of the worst things I've ever seen the way he cracks the tin. So clearly all his bartending is all, all flair, all show, no substance. Double string, not that he does in the film, he cracks it off of the bar top uh, and into a glass. And there we have a turquoise blue. Now it doesn't garnish it in the film, but I think, uh, I think I want to garnish this. And there we are, a turquoise blue, a little bit more gussied up than appears in the film. Uh, so let's give this turquoise blue a good old taste. This is a this is a really good drink actually. It's listen, it's not complicated. There's not a lot going on. It looks cool in its uh, martini glass with its ocean blue color. It's uh, well, it's turquoise blue color. I can taste the curacao. I get that nice Cuban rum on the back end. By the way, this Havana Club Three is one of my favorite rums, as you can tell. I like this quite a bit. Bottle's almost gone. Uh, favorite daiquiri rum. This favorite daiquiri rum. Curacao, tasting the rum. Yeah, getting a bit of that lime bite and then we sort of finish out in a nice mellow pineapple place. Yeah, that is great. All right, what's next? Now the last cocktail we actually see made in the film, believe it or not, occurs less than halfway through the film when we are introduced to Brian Flanagan working his humble little cocktail bar in Jamaica. And on one lazy shift working the bar, Doug Coughlin, who he hasn't seen in over two years since the incident between them in the cell block. Interrupting the meet cute between uh, Tom Cruise and Elizabeth Shue's character. You wanna see a grown man cry like a baby? When you're hey bartender. Coughlin, of course, is there on his honeymoon with his new rich wife. So Doug orders from Brian a daiquiri. Now the daiquiri that Brian serves him out of a blender, no less, looks a lot like a pina colada. In fact, it Kind of looks exactly like a pina colada, colour, texture, glassware and everything. But I am bound by my duties as a bartender to serve him a daiquiri, so a daiquiri he shall get. Now he doesn't order any variation on the drink, no strawberry, raspberry, passion fruit, whatever have you. So we will serve him just a standard 
lime blended daiquiri. However, on the bar that Brian tends, I can see a couple of uh, bottles of an aged Bacardi rum. So I reckon to get the color that he did, he probably used a more slightly aged rum than the standard silver Bacardi that we usually see him use in the show. So in a blender, this cocktail I shall make, and we will start with two ounces of our aged rum. Aged five years, I wouldn't go more than this, I wouldn't go as high as a seven. And we're going to add one ounce of our simple syrup, with a little bit of Demerara sugar in it for color and for flavor. And I'm going to add one ounce of lime juice. Then I'm gonna roughly double the volume of the cocktail in ice in the blender. In it goes. and blend. It's daiquiri time. Oh no, we came up short. I think this will look great with just a single frond of pineapple. Oh yeah. Yeah, look at that, that looks great. How's our blender daiquiri? Delicious. That's a daiquiri. And in fact, I don't often make them with an aged rum or with a demerara syrup. I usually have them like I say, with my Havana Club three year and just a normal plain white sugar cane simple syrup. But this, this is pretty good. And I definitely think going with a more aged rum was the right idea here because it just carries more flavor, more body, picks up uh, more complexity from the oak that it sits on. Uh, but of course, when you're blending that with twice, it, with twice its volume in ice, you're really gonna lose a lot of that complexity, a lot of that flavor. So I think adding that back in with uh, a more deeper, more richer simple syrup and a more aged rum, I think is absolutely the right way to go if you're going to make a blended daiquiri. Oh. Oh. And beautiful, delicious rum. I love a daiquiri, by the way. I really love a daiquiri. So here we are. This is all four cocktails that appear in the film Cocktail. Uh, minus the red eye because we drank that already and I'm very surprised I haven't thrown it back up. You know. So that is the show. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of In The Drink. It's been a wee while, uh, but I really love making this show. Whenever I can come back to do it, I absolutely sort of have to. It's, uh, it's a bit of a necessity to my way of life now. I love it. I love making this show. And I really love it that you guys watch it too, all 10 of you. Thank you. I'd love to see this uh, channel grow uh, one day. So any constructive criticism, of course, offer it. It's always good to hear that stuff. Uh, if you want to say something nice, that probably won't hurt me either. Thank you very much, and I will see you next week. Yes, next week, not next month or a year. Next week for the next episode of In The Drink. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers.